Is it recording? Sweet. Nice. All right, sweet. So first off, we're going to be getting started with HTML. So what is HTML? So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's not a programming language. It's a markup language used to tell your browser how to structure the web pages you visit. It can be as complicated or as simple as the web developer wishes it to be. HTML consists of a series of elements which you can use to enclose, wrap, or mark up different parts of the content to make it appear or act a certain way. The enclosing tags make a bit of content into a hyperlink a, to link to another page on the web, italicizing words, and so on. For example, let's take the following line of content. So, my cat is very grumpy. If we wanted the line to stand by itself, we could specify that it's a paragraph by enclosing it in a paragraph element. So the opening P, my cat is very grumpy, closing P. So tags in HTML are case insensitive. They can be written in uppercase or lowercase. For example, a title could be written, okay, with basically any combination of upper and lowercase, and it would work fine. Best practice is to have all the tags in lowercase for consistency. So anatomy of an HTML element. So you got the opening tag and then the content and then you have the closing tag which is basically the opening tag with the forward slash at the very beginning. And then the whole thing is known as an element. The main parts of our elements are the opening tags. So they consist of the name of the element. In this case, it's a P for paragraph and then wrapped by closing angle brackets. This states where the elements begin or start to take effect. In this case, where the start of the paragraph is. Okay, makes sense. The closing tag, this is the same as the opening tag, except it includes a forward slash before the element's name. This states where the element ends, in this case, where the end of the paragraph is. Failing to include the closing tag is a common beginning error or beginner's error and can lead to strange results. Makes sense. Program doesn't know where the uh, paragraph ends. The content. So this is the content of an element, which is just text. The cat is very grumpy. And the element is the opening tag plus the closing tag with all the content inside it. Makes sense. So active learning. So let's create our first HTML element. The line below in the input area by wrapping it in the tags em and closing the em tag put em before it to open the element and then after that to close it this should give it an italic emphasis you'll be able to see your changes update live in the output area okay so this is my text let's give it a em it's a tag okay so as soon as i did that changed it to italics and then forward slash em so i'm guessing if i write anything here it's not going to be italicized all right sweet show the solution same okay so i left the space in there you're not supposed to leave a space or else i guess that counts as yeah okay makes sense <clears throat> Get really stuck. So am I supposed to? All right. So nesting elements. You can put elements inside other elements too. This is known as nesting. If we wanted to state that our cat is very grumpy, we would wrap the word very in a strong element, which means that the word is strongly emphasized. So how would that look? So if we take this, and put it in here. Okay, so it's just strong, I guess, is. Okay, makes sense. So basically, we can put elements inside other elements. So the strong element is inside the P element, okay. However, you need to make sure that the elements are properly nested. In this example above, if we open the P element first and then the strong element, 
Therefore, we have to close the strong element first and the P element. Okay, yeah, so it's like a well, hierarchy. The elements have two. Okay, so this would be wrong. So let's see what this looks like. So the cat is very grumpy. My cat, okay, because you're opening the strong element and then closing it after the very grumpy. So the grumpy gets included in it too. Okay. So don't do that. All right, sweet. So block versus inline elements. So there's two important categories of elements in HTML, which you should know about. They are block level elements and inline elements. So block level forms a visible block on the page. They will appear on a new line from whatever content went before it. Any content that goes after it will also appear on a new line. Block level elements tend to be structural elements on the page that represent, for example, paragraph, lists, navigation, menu, fold, footers, etc. A block level element won't, wouldn't be nested inside an inline element, but it might be nested inside another block element. Okay, I hope they give us an example. Inline elements are those that are contained within block level elements and surround only small parts of the document's content. Okay, so inline goes inside the block, but block only goes inside block and surround only a small part of the document's content, not the entire paragraph and groupings of the content. An inline element will not cause a new line to appear in the document they will normally appear inside a paragraph of text. For example, an A element, hyperlink, or emphasis, or strong. So they're saying that emphasis, or like EM, is a inline, while something like a paragraph is a block. Oh, I see, okay, okay. So every time, mm, so if you put, EMs next to each other, it's going to be in one line. But if you put P's next to each other, there's going to be an indent, or not an indent, but a line space between every single okay element. Gotcha. So EM is a line inline element. So as you can now see below, the first three elements sit on the same line as one another with no spaces in between them. True. Can I open in code? Oh shit, what is this? No, I don't want, to. okay, true. On the other hand, P is a block level element, so each element appears on a new line in the space above and below each. The spacing is due to default CSS styling that the browser applies to the paragraphs. Okay, so paragraphs have, so how can you tell the difference between an inline or a P, or is that just something you memorize? So EM, okay. So I'm guessing for this, I could like put this inside this, and then I should get first, second. So fourth should turn into first, second. Okay, and it's all in one line because you have the EM, you have the inline element. And then, but if I were to do this, and then, so you have this P element, and then put another P element in there, below, and then close this P element. So even if it's nested, so you have a paragraph, inside a paragraph, you still get a separate line, okay. True, so I guess that's what they mean by blocks. Note to the HTML5 redefined element categories, while these definitions are more accurate and less ambiguous than the ones that went before it, they are a lot more complicated to understand than block and inline, so we will stick to these throughout this topic. Block and inline are used in this topic should not be confused with the type of CSS boxes with the same names. Okay, so it's gonna be CSS boxes called block and inline that we're gonna get into later. While they correlate by default, changing the CSS display type doesn't change the category of the element and doesn't affect which element it can contain. 
True. That's one of the reasons why HTML5 dropped these terms was to prevent rather conf common confusion. Okay. You can find useful reference pages. All right, okay, that's for more reading. Empty elements. So not all elements follow the pattern of opening tag, content, closing tag. Some elements consist of only a single tag, which is usually used to insert in, and embed something into the document. The place it is included, for example, the image element embeds an image file into a page in the position it is included in. So IMG SRC and then this hyperlink would output this. Okay, sounds about right. Attributes. So elements can also have attributes which looks like this. So class, editor note, Okay. Attributes contain extra information about the element which you don't want to appear in the actual content. In this case, the class attribute allows you to give the element an identifying name that can be later used to target the element with style information and other things. An attribute should have a space between it and the element name for the previous attribute if the element has one or more attributes. So the attribute should have a space between it and the element name. So attribute, element name, okay. The attribute name followed by an equal sign. So class, equal sign. The attribute value with opening and closing quotes wrapped around it. So editor notes. So you're gonna have the attribute and equal sign quotes and then the value no space between all that. The only space is between the element name and the attribute. Sounds about right. Okay, active learning. So let's add attributes to an element. Another example of an element is A, which is an anchor. This will make a piece of text that wraps around into a hyperlink. This can take a number of attributes, but several are as follows. Okay. Oh, I see, okay. So href is an attribute that directs you to a web page that you want to link. So href, so for example, okay. And then you have the attribute title. So title attribute specifies extra information about the link, such as what page it is you are linking to, title. This will appear as a tooltip, and then you have the target. Attribute specifies browsing content, which will be used to display the link. Oh, sorry, the browser context. For example, blank will display it in a new tab. Mm, I see, okay. So edit the line below the input area to return a link to your favorite website. First, add the A element, second, add the href, title, and lastly, a target. In the new link, you'll be able to see your changes update live. You should be able to click the link when it's hovered over the displays. Click navigates the web in the href element. Remember that you need to include a space between the element name and each attribute. If you make a mistake, you can always reset it by the reset button. Okay, so let's try and do this. Um, so we have the A attribute, and it's going to be, so you're, so you're going to have the href equal, and the quotes, let's do, do I need to, uh, I think I can do dot com. So that's the href, so that is the link, and then we have the title attribute, and that's going to be so then an equal sign and then quotes again. Uh, Reddit. And then we're going to have the target attribute. And then it's going to be what did they say? To open a new tab, you type in blank. And then you close it. Reddit. 
it. Well, there's no live. So P. This is my favorite site. Uh, P. Unless I messed it up. So href, href, and then title, t-i-t-l-e. Unless I actually need to get the, oh shit, reddit. Unless I need the full HTTPS thing. Hmm. So A, and then I closed it. Okay, let's try this again. Reset. So this is my favorite website. In the line below, turn it. First, add the A element. Second, add the attribute. A link to my favorite website. Try the same one they used. So Mozilla dot org. Okay. Space. Okay. And then title equal. This is Mozilla. And then a space again. And then target equal quotes. Like close it. Am I missing something? So does it have to be inside something like this? A href equal quotes um, Google dot CA and then it's gonna be title equal And then it's going to be target equal underscore blank. Taco doesn't work when I do it. A href title blank. Ah, I see. Okay, I was missing this. Mm. So it's not self-closing. So the A isn't another example of an element is. I see, okay. I see. Okay, so it's a 
href equal reddit.com and then its title equal reddit and then it's going to be target equal underscore blank and then you close it mm, okay gotcha and if you click on it i don't know where this is going i think it just takes you back to here try changing it google.ca Yeah, I think it just keeps you on this page. Okay. All right, makes sense. All right, solution. Next up is Boolean attributes. So you'll sometimes see attributes written without values. This is perfectly allowed. These are called Boolean attributes, and they can only have one value, which is generally the same as the attribute name. An example, take the disabled attribute, which you can assign to form input elements if you want them to be disabled grayed out so the user can't enter any data into them so shorthand so input type equal text disabled so this is to disable it as shorthand it is perfectly access uh, allowable to write this as follows we've also included a non-disabled input for reference to give you more idea of what's going on so input type text Disabled, so this one doesn't work. And then input type text, this one you can type text in here. Okay. Emitting quotes around and attribute values. When you look around the World Wide Web, you'll come across all kinds of strange markup styles, including attribute values without quotes. This is allowable in certain circumstances but will break your markup in others. For example, if we visit our link from earlier, we could write a basic version with only the href attribute as this. Okay, so for href, we don't need to include the quotes, but only in certain circumstances. However, as soon as we add a title attribute, things could go wrong. Okay, so if you just include the uh, and as soon as you add another attribute, oh, I see, okay. At this point, the browser will misinterpret your markup thinking that the title attribute is actually three attributes. Oh, I see. The and two Boolean attributes, Mozilla and homepage. This is obviously not what was intended. It will cause errors or unexpected behavior into the code. As seen in the live example below, try hovering over the link. The. Click this. Okay, that's cool. So our advice is always include the quotes. It avoids such problems and results in more readable quote. Okay. In this article, you'll notice that the attributes are all wrapped in double quotes. You might, however, see single quotes in some people's HTML. This is purely a matter of style, and you can feel free to choose which one. Okay, so both of them work. So single quote or double quote, they both do the same thing. You should, however, make sure you don't mix them together. The following will go wrong. Okay, so you have a double quote and then a single quote. If you use one type of quote in your html you can include the other type of quote inside your attribute value without causing any problems okay that makes sense so double quotes and then you can have the single quotes and i'll still think that this is one thing okay however if you want to include a quote within the quotes where both the quotes are the same you'll have to use html entities for the quotes for example, this will break. Okay, not this. So isn't this fun? So it has single quotes and then an apostrophe in here. Which 
I'm guessing makes it think that this is one quote and then might give you like an error on this one. So instead you need to do this. Holy shit, okay. 30. So I'm guessing this translate into an apostrophe. And hashtag 39 semicolon. Okay. So let's look at the anatomy, the wrap ups. That wraps up the basics of individual HTML elements, but they aren't very useful on their own. Now we'll look at how individual elements are combined to form an entire HTML page. So you got the doc type, HTML, head, meta, not sure what this does, title, title of the page, makes sense. And then you close the head and then you have the body. Paragraph, this is my page, close the body and then close the HTML. So the doc type in the mist of times when HTML was young, doc types were meant to act as links to a set of rules that the HTML page had to follow to be considered good HTML, which means automatic error checking and other useful things. They used to look something like this. Doc type HTML, okay, so a huge link. However, these days, no one really cares about them, and they're really just a historical artifact that needs to be introduced for everything to work right. Doctype HTML is the shortest string of characters that counts as a valid doctype. That's all you really need to know. Okay, sweet. So just include that, I guess, in the beginning. HTML, this is the HTML element. This element wraps all the content on the entire page sometimes known as the root element. Head, the head element, this acts as a container for all the stuff you want to include on the HTML page that isn't the content you are showing to your page's viewers. This includes things like keywords, page descriptions that you want to appear in search results, CSS to our style, style or content, character declarations, and more. Meta, okay, this is the thing, I had no idea what it was about. Meta char set UTF-8. This element sets the characters. This element sets the character set your document should use to UTF-8, which includes most characters from the vast majority of human written languages. Essentially, you can now handle any text content you might put into it. There's no reason not to set it and can help avoid some problems later. Okay, true. Title, okay, so the title element, this sets the title of your page, which is the title that appears in the browser tab and the page is loaded in. This is used to describe the page when you bookmark and favorite it. So I guess it's this thing here. That's the title. Body, the body element contains all the content that you want to show your web user when the Visit your page, whether it's text, images, video games, play, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the body is what's actually being shown. <clears throat> if you want to experiment with writing some HTML on your computer, you can copy the HTML page, example listed above. Create a new file in your text editor. Paste the code into the file. Save the file as index.html. Now you'll be able to open the tab, open this file in a web browser to see what was rendered and then edit the code and refresh the browser to see what the result is. So in this exercise, you can edit the code locally on your computer as outlined above, or you can edit in the editable sample below. The editable sample window represents just the content of the body element we'd like you to have a go at implementing the following steps. Just below opening of the body element, add a main title for the document. This should be wrapped in H1, opening and closing tags. Edit the paragraph content to include some text about something you're interested in. Make any important word stand out in bold by strapping them, by wrapping them in a strong opening and closing tag. Add a link to your paragraph 
add an image to your document. Mm -hmm. As explained earlier in the article, you'll get bonus points if you manage to link to a different image. Uh huh. All right, let's try this. So this is the body tag. So first things first, we want to set an H1. So an H1. And basically what it's going to say is this is a little about me. Nice. And then edit the paragraph. I like coding in HTML. Okay. And then afterwards, so let's try strong. Oops. Uh, strong. And we'll copy this, paste it here do that whole thing. I see, okay. And then, let's add a link. Um, so this HTML actually, I wonder if this would work. Okay, so let's Google. Okay. We'll go to HT, HTML. Let's see what pops up. Go to the Wikipedia page on HTML so people can learn about our Wikipedia page. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the HTML. We're going to put this A um, href equal. And we're going to put in the web page. In the HTML. And then what we're going to do is we're going to include a title. And that title is going to be Wikipedia HTML5. And then we're going to put a, what was that attribute called? It wasn't title, it was, was it type? It was a href. Oh no, above that. It was target equals and then quotes underlined. And BLA link. We're going to close that and then we're going to type in HTML. Put caps HTML. And then we're going to close off the A tag. It's going to make this look a little bit prettier. Oh, shit, what is this? There we go. Strong. We have a strong in there. So this doesn't, okay, this makes it not matter as much. And then if we go hover over this, Wikipedia, HTML, click on this, opens a new tab, has to do with Wikipedia. And then let's include an image. So IMG, IMG, SRC equal, and then let us get the image address. See if that works. Yep, that opens up that. Um, there, IMG, SRC. Uh, let's go all the way here. 
quotes, quotes, okay, and that's all you need to do. So this actually put it in, oh, I see. So let's put it in before, I mean after the HTML. So if I wanted to make it under it, I feel like I could probably put it into its own paragraph. So P, there we go. And then P, and that brings it underneath it. Cool. I like coding in HTML5. So my question is, can I turn this into an image now? So if I get rid, okay, no, I wanna keep this. So if I get rid of this HTML and instead put this image tag, okay. So if I get rid of this HTML and put it into this image tag, I like coding in HTML5, and then there's a way to make this bigger. Okay, let me get rid of this, and then when I click on this, it takes me to the web page. Cool, cool, cool. All right, show solution. Wow, this is. Some music I really enjoy playing. Uh, okay, cool. In the above examples, you may have noticed that there was a lot of white space included in the code. This is not necessarily at all. The following two code snippets are equal. Dogs are silly. Dogs are silly. No matter how much white space you use, HTML reduces it to one single space when rendering the code. Okay, okay, true. This is readability. It is so much easier to understand what's going on in your code if you have it nicely formatted and not just bunched together. Also, so basically it doesn't matter how much white space you have, it's always gonna make it into one. Um, so much easier to understand what's going on in your code. If you have it nicely formatted and not just bunched up into a big mess. Uh, it is up to you with styling, you might, but you would also consider formatting, okay. In HTML, the characters are special characters and they're part of the HTML syntax. So how do you include one of these characters into your text, for example, if you really want to use an ampersand or less than signal and not have it interpreted as code, as some browsers may do? We have to use character references, special codes that represent characters and can be used in exact circumstances. Okay, so it's like they did earlier. So the uh, one comma was and, well, that was different from the one they had over there. So and apostrophe, this is and amp, this is and quote, and GT greater than, less than, okay. In the below example, you can see two paragraphs which are talking about web technologies. In HTML, you define a paragraph using the P element. So in, in HTML, you define a paragraph using the P element. 
in HTML, you define a paragraph using the less than p greater than element. Okay, okay. In the live output below, you can see that the first paragraph has gone wrong because the browser thinks that the second instance of P is starting a new paragraph. The second line looks fine because we have replaced the angle brackets with the character references. So in case you ever need to put that in there. HTML, as with most, there's a mechanism to write comments in code. Comments are ignored by the browser and invisible to the user. And their purpose is to allow you to include comments in the code to say how your code works. What the different part of the code do, this can be very useful if you return to a code base that you have not worked on for over six months and can't remember what you did, or if you hand it over to somewhere else. So basically this is to start off the comments and this is to end the comments. Here I am. Mm, okay, gotcha. And summary, you've reached the end. We hope you've enjoyed the basics of HTML. All right. Off to the next one. <laughs>